this is part of our program of reconciliation. And reconciliation, you know, has to be about uh, give and take. But it means that, uh, you know, from, from those who feel that uh, they were part of, you know, the, the conquered and therefore their history and heritage was erased over many decades and centuries, um, they must be given the space to can really express their wishes mm. and be accommodated. Uh, while at the same time, I mean, uh, we, we, we always encourage that. That's why even in terms of the process, there's, there's a pro- it includes, you know, consultation amongst communities so that there can be accommodation. But I think where we have a problem is where sometimes, you know, uh, people who have been advantaged, you know, feel too possessive to can let go and, and create that kind of room to allow those who feel that, you know, for many, uh, many years they have not been part of the decision-making processes of the country and their heritage has been erased. Mm. That accommodation, you know, is key uh, from, from both sides. Very interesting. I'll open the lines at this point on 0891-104-208, 0891-104-208. Let me also read you some SMSs because they're coming through thick and fast at 34701. Somebody says, being a foreigner, I see name change positive because it happens mostly to run down places which we have not to visit anymore. That's according to Carl. Kosi Tuga in Port Elizabeth says, name change has become a charterist tripartite alliance agenda. Even those who necklaced fellow Africans to gain power are being honored. Um, there is DR as well who says, there's a place between Rustenburg and Brits called Kafferskral. Does Afri Forum intend changing that name? Kali Kril, do you have a, a view on that? Yes, we, of course, uh, we're not in government, so we cannot change that. But I can tell you that uh, if there is an effort to change Kafferskral, and I actually thought that most of these names have changed already, uh, we would support that uh, because we know that uh, the, 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 the name Kaffer is is derogatory and people feel hurtful with regard to that and is uh, so we would uh, support that process and uh, i actually think that most of these names have already been changed but uh, well that's probably something the deputy minister would follow up if there's still such a name uh, are, there, are, there, are these names still in existence deputy minister such as not gedacht nobody kafferskral bosmanschat well as, as i said uh, Kolani, um you know we, we, we don't, maybe that's something, uh, as, as both the professor and, and, and Mr. Krill are, are suggesting, uh, probably we would want to get, you know, from our department and also our sister departments in the provinces and, and, and such structures in the local authorities to have a more proactive follow-up. Because our, the, the, pro, the procedure so far is that this has to be a local initiative. Uh, and I must admit that uh, as far as uh, so far we've been managing this process. Hmm. We have can not... I just come in on this question of, of the changing yeah. of these yeah. uh, objectionable names? Yes. Um, all the official names in the country no longer include any objectionable names with the K word in them. But what we have is a lot of informal names which are used locally quite often for little villages or for geographical features like streams and rivers and mountains. And there's very little that government can do about that. All they can do is change those which are officially recorded as place names. Mm. All right, let me tell you what people are saying, of course, again, on the SMSs. Somebody says name changes are inversely related to the governance of the province. Name changing is divisive and wasteful. What about nature, says someone else. Uh, Sajini Ndenze says when it comes to service delivery, there's no money for the poor. But come name changes, there's a lot of money. Uh, there's also an SMS that says these name changes are fueled by hatred of all things seen as Western. This is now becoming more important than democracy, which, uh, wait, wait, which Mandela? and Mbega stood for, that's JPE. Number of emails as well, there is one uh, that says, why is this name change process always associated with the ANC only if it is done in the spirit of reconciliation? Is it the ANC that needs to reconcile? Was the liberation movement uh, that fought for today's freedom only the ANC? Do you want to respond to that, Deputy Minister? Well, there might be uh, uh, that perception, um, and, and it is understandable, Kolani, in the sense that I mean, if you look at the uh, uh, body politic of South Africa, you would find that the ANC has the overwhelming support of the majority of South Africans, as it's been illustrated in, in uh, various elections. Uh, so, so, but I mean, the, that's just really how it comes out, but it's not really true. 
I mean, uh, as I said, this is a process which is generated, you know, at the local community level. It might be that, you know, as I say, because the NC uh, uh, dominates a, a lot of, you know, the political organization at local. Because it, if, if it, that continues, if that's the perception, then, then it confirms what others say, that geographical names are, are generally a faculty of, of the powerful in society or community. We've actually, you know, uh, because of being, you know, uh, uh, conscious of, of, of that perception, you know, at various forums where this matter has been discussed at the, at the ANC level, the party, party uh, political level, we've actually been urging uh, our comrades to be much more conscious of this and, and make sure that, you know, uh, we, we, we go out of our way. Uh, to assert, you know, other historical aspects of, of, you know, our localities and affirm also, even in terms of uh, political, you know, heroes and heroines, not necessarily coming from the ANC. And there are quite a number, If you know, we, we may not go into detail, but there are a number of areas. I mean, if you look at, just as an example, I mean, the major uh, 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 hospital, tertiary hospital in South Africa, which used to be uh, the HF Fervolt Hospital in Pretoria, Mm. You know, it's currently the Steve Pico uh, Academic Hospital. I mean, I don't know whether I mean, Steve Pico was never a member of the ANC. And, and I'm just giving you that as a, a major feature of something sure. which, you know, uh, government uh, and, and, the, and the metro of Tswani would have had a major say in that kind of name change. Just as, uh, but as let me get the professor's view on that, because, yes. p- Professor, there are others who contend that this, this is just about who's powerful and who's not. Um. The, the, the problem to a certain extent, and this is what I meant about uh, political direction from the top, was that uh, in 1994 and in the 1990s, uh, I don't think there was enough insistence to local authorities and, and local branches of the ANC and so on. There wasn't enough insistence that they consulted widely. Now, we now have an act in place called the Promotion of Administrative Justice Act, which lays down quite clearly the nature of the consultation that must take place and some of these bitterly contested ones like uh, um, like Twani for example and the street names in Durban they, they actually ended up in court and the appeal court has thrown out the changes simply because there wasn't enough consultation but I think that in the recent years there has been more insistence from the top and more realization that there has to be widespread consultation. And another way in which the change can be eased is by allowing for alternative names to be used for a while. Mm. Uh, This is widely done in other countries which have uh, complex societies, uh, such as New Zealand, where they are still using the white names as well as the Maori names for a while until people get used to the new names and they understand what the new names mean mm. because uh, a lot of white people don't understand what these names mean and they, they're frightened of them. So you need a lot of public uh, advice and education and consultation to smooth the process. Okay. And well, if there's more consultation, I think we go, are going to see that the names won't all come from one particular, particular uh, political factor. All right, let me, let me just quickly go to Durban, then. You've spoken about Durban. Peter in KZN is on the line. He wants to talk about uh, what has happened in Durban. Peter, good morning. Good morning, uh, Kani. Hi, welcome. I just want to say that probably the most racially divisive thing that's ever happened in Durban has been the, the renaming of the streets. Um, the ANC simply ran roughshod over all uh, all of the people that had objections. There were 22,000 objections to the change, uh, road name changes, but they were simply swept under the carpet. There's not been a court action to, to enforce them to change certain of the names back, and the ANC have done nothing about it, and they don't intend to do anything about it. They're simply going to uh, go, uh, go through the process again and keep it. They've changed names like Moore Road to Che Guevara. Who the hell is Che Guevara? What has he got to, to do this country, uh, with this country? What has he contributed to this country? Then they they named that streets after failed African dictators like Julius Nyerere and Kenneth Kowinda, people who had nothing to, the, to do with the history of Durban. They never ever considered the, um, the historical value of the names that they changed, what those people contributed to the, uh, uh, to the, the building of the city, and... Um, the fact that those people sat on those councils, some of them for 10 years, with zero pay, uh, contributing to the building of the city, and they were simply swept away because of a spite action by
by Mr. Mark Sutcliffe. And he didn't care about the people of Durban, and thank God he's, he's gone from here. All right.